Hello, everybody. Yesterday, I gave a review. Today, I'm going to do the same, but this is going to be a final review because I tried a few things with some with uh, other characters that I may have misjudged, such as the Necromancer. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the Necromancer. Um, again, it's still not like the funnest starting class, but there's a couple things that I didn't take into perspective. Um, it's still like the Diablo 2 Necromancer, which is Pog, by the way. It's great. Um, it's it's fantastic how they how they did it and made the abilities work the and stuff. Grown too cutting, even for these parts. But I didn't realize that the uh, Golem actually has a, an ability that when you activate it. It, it basically um, stuns the enemy, so it taunts them, forces, forces them to attack the golem. When they attack the golem, um, all my minions can do all their damage to it directly. The, the, the mob becomes like hard focused onto it, and uh, it's really good. Um, it, it feels really good once you get to this point. And then I also didn't realize that in in your skill selection, the Book of the Dead under golems that you can get the blood golem and the iron golem and the iron golem obviously doesn't unlock until 32 like I said in my other review the necromancer's full potential doesn't start to come out until you hit 30s so you know in live this build will be very viable for groups like group support you know stuff like that um but I want to say it's one of the slower progressors because of like mobility. <clears throat> now saying that, I mean, you can use your, you know, your dash as a mobility to move a little faster. I'm not ready yet. And uh, I haven't fully went through the tree, you know, to, to see if like any one of these skills accommodate mobility. So there might be one that, that makes it move a little bit faster, but I mean, the way I built the tree for the Necromancer is that um, it, it's it's based on like a couple different abilities instead of like filling your whole skill bar. So, like for example, you'll see that I'm missing two abilities. And I'm level 25. It's only because I don't have any like gear. I don't have any legendary gear that gives me. Um, abilities that I can put on my bar. I'm using actually uh, legendaries from other classes. It's a mix, mix match kind of thing going on. Um, <clears throat> now, with that being said, I did get um, uh, offhand, which is the vicious storm shield, that gives me two more maximum skelet skeletal mages, and then I got uh, the boots. They give me uh, two more maximum skeleton warriors, so I got a total total of uh, of like 13, uh, 13 minions, which is which is really good. I mean, it's really good to, to hold threat. It's good for like I said, group progression. Um, sorry if you guys got the background here. I'm still kind of kind of tweaking things out. But yeah, uh, overall review of the Necromancer is definitely a uh, 10 for class. Uh, as far as speed goes, I'd definitely only give it like maybe a, a 7 to an 8. Like, like mobility. Um, other than that, it's great. Like, it's great for group support. Uh, you, you're, you're, the enemies will focus on your minions more than likely than than your party and it does depend on the other person's damage output it seems like the the ai focuses on whoever's got more damage output or who whoever's some more of a threat right but that's why you got the you know you got the golem ability to taunt so like for example if i go in here so piss these guys off right 
So I can I can make the golem time him. You see that little thing that went above his head real quick? Yeah. But it, it makes him focus on the golem. So all the damage is like, you know, he doesn't really do his, his damage in full. It seems to really like stop them from using their stronger abilities as well. But uh yeah. Yeah, I give the Necromancer a great solid review. Like they it's fun. Good class. Uh, yesterday I kind of gave it a, it was like a, it wasn't really a negative review. It just was like not to my liking, but I, I definitely feel quite a bit different now that I realize that the Golem actually has its own ability. It's pretty strong. Um, so back to the Druid, uh, the Druid also, I kind of gave a, not 100% like review and that's kind of my mistake so like i didn't really play through the druids all the abilities for these classes either you know so i'm just i'm basing it off of like what i built and i built uh you know like a werewolf druid and honestly the werebear is actually pretty strong so like instead of going uh the werewolf build that i did <clears throat> um i probably could have maxed out claw to begin with and then maxed out shred then i would have had a lot more damage and i wouldn't have had to worry about more about i wouldn't have had to worry more about uh defense mit mitigation um stuff like that so i could have built this tree better um so if i would have done that i'm sure this would have been a lot more viable with survivability but like as of right now between my spender and my gain i wasn't getting enough spirit to do enough damage for this build to be super viable so for me it wasn't like fantastic i mean you guys can watch my other review and get get some of my comments out of like how i thought about it uh i mean i think it's great it's great but the, the bigger issue is, is that <clears throat> with spirit boons because you can't unlock it until uh until you're um over in act two yeah so over here in act two i have to be able to get over here to to do my quest for spirit boons and i imagine that spirit boons has an accommodation to your resource costs or maybe damage output overall so you don't have to use your spender as much but either way it's it's gonna be a big uh a big addition to the, what this class does So like a lot of people give it an l rating they say it sucks I think it's gonna be a great build, but you ain't gonna see its full. You ain't gonna see its start, its start potential until level thirty. Um, yeah, that's that's the druid in a nutshell. I, I think it's great. Uh, it's fun to play. It's progressively quick to level. Uh, it moves quick. It's got a good mobility, movement speed base, and stuff like that. Now, <clears throat> uh, with the rogue. When I reviewed the rogue, I didn't go over the rogue's um, class, like class abilities. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, the the rogue specialization, uh, particularly. So like in the specialization, I actually unlocked this. Um, I I didn't pursue it because I felt strong already, even without this. But now, with um, the two different selections that I have available for combo points or inner sight, when I play the rogue um, and I build up my combo, I do even more damage. My crit range was like, my overpower hit range is almost like an 800 to 1000 for hit. My crit range was 600 something, to almost 700 something. So it's pretty decent considering that, I mean, I'm only level 25. You know, my gear's not the greatest. Uh, and my weapons aren't like, you know, they're not like a tune focused. It's like I'm using a mix match, right? And I just actually, yesterday we were doing some farming, uh, just rolling a dungeon and resetting it. And uh, I got a dagger. And this dagger, I mean, actually it says it gives me negative damage, but uh my 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 sword that i have you have 25 percent chance to increase the increased 
critical strike against injured enemies and then when, when i'm healthy you gain uh increased uh crowd control duration now so this one i don't even get i don't even get the benefit for this weapon here because uh it's barbarian so this one does uh skill damage up to 32 percent based on my available primary resource uh receiving the maximum benefit while it's while it's maximum so like if i was to try this let's see so much my damage how much damage do i lose when i use this right now my damage is to go up to it's got a stack because i have uh i have more damage based if i stand still so 570 let's see what we go up to with this Five fifty-eight. So it's it's a little bit less. Now the dagger is going to be faster attack speed than the other sword. This is a sword, so the attack is one ten. You think the dagger would be quicker? Um, yeah, one twenty. Very fast attack speed. So that that makes me attack quicker as well by the base speed. Um, let's go to a smaller town real quick just so we can uh, we can poke around real quick at the enemies and show you guys an example. I mean, I'm going to go into full detail here as much as possible with these characters, and we'll make this as uh, we'll make this a new highlight on Twitch, and then I'm going to cut it up. I'm going to cut it up on YouTube and do some video footage of me in different combat situations with each class in the YouTube video. Oh, it feels so good. See, so we got a legendary amulet out of the gate. What do we get? Uh, barrier. I mean, barrier is pretty strong if you were to sack it with other stuff. But I, I just feel like it's... Uh, it's just a level 25 uh, capped item. Like, that's what you get in the range. It just feels so good, man. You know, with that little bit of damage loss, like, I'm not really noticing it. Um, really not. Oops, I didn't want to hit that. I didn't want to go invisible. So defensive. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Okay, oh is this still one with the spiders? Yeah. Life is so, uh, <laughs> it's such a swish it off. feels so good dude i can't wait to like i really can't wait to stack stuff um on this on this build like to have a you know legendaries that accommodate my skills <laughs> i 
Get out of here. Get out of here. That's the worst. It is literally the worst, like, mob combination you could play right now. <clears throat> All ranged. Freeze. A horrible combo. Get away from me. Get out of here. But uh, it, it's really a fun class to play with the group for sure. It's like you don't need a lot of damage. You don't need a lot of, a lot of damage with the group uh, for direct boss damage. Like, if you're trying to kill a boss, it's, it's definitely a lot quicker. Because <clears throat> it's focused, it's it's more or less focused damage. I need more time. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The build could use work. Is obviously like gear to accommodate it. Like I'm not really using, um, like anything that benefits the skills that I'm using. The only thing that I'm using is like I got one. I got this uh, legendary that gives me a bonus to dash. And then the rest is just increased critical damage, uh, increased damage, crowd control stuff. I mean, that's that's all I got for my benefits for this character for gear and it's not much but if I had stuff that benefited like the direct skills that I was using like my main attack or my secondary or the poison then this build would be would be huge because I would I, all my damage is directed to just frontal attack which means I like with this I got I got a lot of crit strike I'm hitting real high numbers um but you know, I don't have a lot of defense. I'm weak. Um, as I as I spent my potions in that group, it was a bad mix of mobs. Like they did freezing and ranged and stuff like that. If it's if it's all melee and they come running at me, they're all dead. Like instantly, it's just no contest. But uh, yeah, for boss fights, it's pretty good. I like the rogue definitely. Um, <clears throat> it'll definitely either be a leak or like a like a um, Diablo starter when the game launches or I mean I might have just changed my mind though I might go with the necromancer just because it has more it has more group support with the minions not in town the minions I mean it overthrows the you know the group support to where like everything's attacking your minion or your golem when he can pull a threat so that's pretty big pretty big otherwise my other my other um, choice was going to be the, the Sorceress. Uh, the mixture of the abilities that the Sorceress has is great. And, uh, I mean, it's core to one of my favorite character classes in Diablo 2, and that was the, the Bliss Sark. One of my favorite builds. Um, one of my favorite builds in, in Diablo 2 was definitely Bliss Sark. Like, doing the cow board, freezing the cows. You know, having a group of people running with you, they just like pretty much shatter them and just complete easy mode, man. It's a lot of fun. So like when they did this, when they did this uh, ability tree, they did it right, I think. I, I dig it. I mean, I went uh, with Frostbolt and the sub mods. And then I went with uh, Frozen Orb and the sub mods. And then I went, uh, I went Ice Armor for defensive. Teleport for an escape. Frost Nova so I could freeze them. Now the mod for Frost Nova, um, killing an enemy frozen by Frost Nova reduces its cooldown for two seconds up to six seconds per cast. It pretty much resets the cooldown like instantly on it. Like if you <clears throat> if you hit a big mob pack that's frozen and you destroy it, I mean it it instantly resets the cooldown for your Frost Nova. So you, you can pretty much just keep hitting it. Um, I took Blizzard. And then I took the, the sub mods directly north. Uh, mana cost and damage or duration. And then I took passives for the ultimate. Uh, they just add uh, cold, chilled, and frozen. So I do more of a, an effective damage using cold damage. But this character class progression feels good. It was quick. Uh, I didn't have any problems leveling. Um, it's very strong. Like the abilities are just strong in general. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of problems leveling up and, and accommodating. 
it's pretty easy to play. Like I can just throw out Blizzard and then left click to, to gain my pool. So the mobs get frozen. If I need to drop defensive, I can just put a frozen armor on. And uh, like I don't, I really don't take that much damage. Yeah, overall, pretty fun. Um, I did get some, I, I believe I got some legendaries that accommodate some skills in this class's playthrough. I don't use Lightning Spear. Attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of my next player cast. That's pretty good. Basic skill damage gains 30, 30%. Uh, critical strikes with the core skills increase my attack speed. Uh, basic, uh, basic skills grant 25% damage reduction for 12 seconds. It's pretty big. Um, barrier, Crowd Snowball gains an additional charge, but the cooldown per charge is increased by 36%. So it doesn't really feel like the Frost Nova is a long cooldown, even with that percentage, based upon the, the mods that I took for, that I took for Frost Nova. Jeez, the lag and turn the town right now in the beta. The character's actually stuck into a walk mode, but okay. Um, anyways. It, it doesn't feel like a longer timer because of the, the the modifier that I have for Frost Nova. Let's see, we got some legendaries here in inventory. What do we get? After immobilization wear off, the enemies are slowed. After, uh, attacking enemy with basic skill increases player. Okay, so I already had that. Um, a lot of the same stuff. But yeah, the, the Sorceress feels great. Definitely a great game character starter. I mean, this is only 25, and I feel like I have huge damage, so I can only imagine what it's going to be like endgame. Uh, last but not least character, um, it's the Barbarian. And with the Barbarian, what I did is um, <clears throat> I basically made a Call of the Ancients, Hammer of the Ancients build. Uh, so I, I didn't make Whirlwind like everybody else did. Well, a lot of, I want to say a lot of people did, not, not everybody else. But... Um, a lot of people made the whirlwind, and the whirlwind requires like gear for it to be super good. And that's, that's even Diablo three. Like Diablo three, when the whirlwind was good, it still required gear for it to be good enough to be viable. Um, a lot of people have an issue with resource management with this build. You're with uh, with this character class. <laughs> I didn't. And the reason why I can say that is. Uh, uh, I use my generator more than I do my spender, and uh, all my build, all my characters' like skills are set up to accommodate group. So, uh, I mean, it's great for solo, right? Like right now, I'm out of resource, but I can show. You know, we can get that, and then if I'm if I'm really in a sticky situation, I can do uh, call of the ancients, and the three guys will come out to do the work for me, which is big. It was big in D3, and it was big in Immortal. Not that I really care to talk about Mortal, but uh, I mean, this class is a lot of fun to play, man. Like, it really is. I think they did a good job. I think that uh, people that give it a, a bad rep because of the, the resource game, you can't do that because this has probably got more gear end game. Uh, you're probably not gonna see a really viable like whirlwind build until level 30. <clears throat> if you get some jobs to accommodate it. But, like, you know, if I get, if I get too, too big of a sticky, sticky situation, I can just drop off the hammer. I can follow the ancient or like that, and 
they just annihilate everything for me. So, I mean, as far as resource management goes, like, I'm not really having too much of an issue using my main attack, which lunge is really big because it automatically takes you over to where the enemy is. <clears throat> I don't have to run towards the enemy. It's, it's always just right there. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty strong for me, man. Like, uh, it's fun. Fun to play. But I'm only using a couple abilities. I didn't max these abilities out either, so, like, they're not at their full strength potential or the full damage potential that they have. So there could be more. Pretty crazy. But overall, this is, it's just a lot of fun to play, man. Uh, the Barbarian was, was uh, it was very, uh, very good playthrough, very, very steady. I didn't, I didn't really have any brick walls with management. Um, I did get to fight one of the world bosses, which got me a cool looking sword. Get out of here, baby. Get out of here, baby. Get out of here. Come here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, overall, the Barbarians, it's it's really fun. But uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it for my uh, my, my review. Um, I'm going to go more into a detailed review, like, of every little thing that I did um, on YouTube. Like, how, why I chose the skills that I did um, and stuff like that. But uh, for this, uh, I chose, like, the, for the basic run, run through of what I chose, uh, Lunging Strike plus Mods. Hammer of the Ancients plus mods, uh, passive for Lucky Hit Chance, a passive uh, for Endless Fury, um, Rallying Cry for group support plus mods, Shout or War Cry uh, plus mods, uh, some passives that benefit to Shout duration, uh, some passives that uh, point towards damage reduction, which I, I really didn't need. I could go more damage. Uh, pit Fighter, increased damage. Uh, hamstring Bleed adds bleed, which is, uh, goes to uh, the mod. The mod that adds bleeding to Lunging Strike, so my primary attack adds bleed. Then uh, there's effects that... There's effects in these uh, mods down here that add to that. And then, uh, obviously, the ultimate, which is called the Ancients plus mods. Um, and this build is really great, like I said, for uh, a starter. Uh, I, I didn't have any issues of progression. I didn't have really any issues of bosses. I died a couple times. Uh, I died during the world boss a couple times, not understanding the mechanic. Uh, as far as, like, solo progression, fighting bosses, I didn't have any issues. Uh, so, yeah, it's great. Fun. Great, great fun to play. Well, that's it for my my review retake. Uh, we'll go to the main menu here, and I'm going to point out what I think would be good for a Diablo character starter. And uh, honestly, I think, like, the strongest for, like, group support is going to be the Necromancer. So if you want a really great group support character class, necromancer hands down um we were we were melting strongholds and stuff like that which is like you know they're plus they're plus level to what you are they're like two levels above what you are um we were melting them uh me and my, me and one other buddy in a group i didn't have any problems with uh donating to the group like defensive and damage with the necromancer so the necromancer is probably like one of the best choices honestly and i i would have said differently yesterday but that's before I knew the Golem had an, a, an ability to pull threat. My second choice would be the Sorceress. The Sorceress is strong, hands down. It's got mobility. Um, there's a lot of like skill growth. I think you're going to get a lot of bonuses towards the skills that you choose with the, the Sorceress early on versus uh, like mid game. Uh, it's great group support. There's lots of different things you can do to do, uh, donate to the group as your skills. 
The Sorceress has always been good in all the Diablos that I played, honestly. Uh, so that would be my second best choice. I think my third choice would be the Barbarian. Barbarian has a lot to offer with the Shouts. You can do a Shout Barb. You can do Call of the Ancients. Um, Call of the Ancients and Shout. You could do a big group support bonus to that. Uh, you could do like a CC bar with like Quake and Stun and stuff like that if you wanted to. You mix abilities together. The barb is pretty good. Uh, pretty strong early on. My fourth choice would probably be the uh, the Rogue. Um, maybe not necessarily, not necessarily, not necessarily, not necessarily the build that I did. The build that I did was off the off the rail. Uh, I chose just straight melee. Um, I wanted to see how far I could take it, but it, it's probably going to be really strong midway on once I get gear pieces to accommodate the, the skills. But I don't think that I would use it as a starter. I would mix range into melee if you're going to do a proper rogue. But the rogue would be great as a like fourth choice for me. And then the last would be the druid. And the only reason is, is because I don't really know what I'm going into with the, you know, the stuff locked. Uh, the specialization is locked behind Act 2. So early on, it would be, it's going to be a slower starter than the other classes that I, that I called out. And that is my final thoughts on the, the beta for what I tested. So first Necro, second Sorceress, third Barbarian. Fourth rogue and fifth would be the druid. Now the druid's gonna be probably be super strong endgame because you'll get stuff to accommodate it a lot. I imagine you're, you're gonna be able to do like uh, elemental build, werewolf and werebear. Werebear is like a barbarian, but obviously you can mix elemental in that because you're a druid. So it's like a barbarian that has magical powers, uh, essentially. If you were to make the mix the werebear. Other than that, I thought the beta was great. It tested great. The graphics were amazing. Uh, mechanics need work. Like, I had a few issues with uh, questing. When I say that I had a few issues with the questing, I mean, like, in the group. Uh, party leader versus sub-party member. Sometimes it would get bugged out. Sometimes the party leader would have issues and the quest would get bugged out because of the sub-party members. Um, there wasn't really a permanent brick to that. We were always able to figure out a solution to fix it, but it did hurt time duration uh, of leveling and stuff like that. So, starting out early in the launch, if you start out at the same time as the other person, uh, you're going to have a great experience. If you start out midway, trying to join somebody midway when they've already, when you're already like through the story some and they're not. It's going to be a little buggy, but other than that, it's to be expected. No game, no game launch that I've ever played has been perfect. So they've done a really good job, I think. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for my review. We're going to go play some. Uh, I don't know what I want to play, actually. <laughs> There's so many choices, man. Uh, I feel like I'm going to go farm with the Necro for a little bit. I'm going to go farm with the Necromancer for a little bit, which is funny because yesterday I probably would have said the same thing.